Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to take a correlation matrix out of the statistical program PASW for Predictive Analytics Software, which was previously known as SPSS for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, and how to import it into uh, Excel and clean it up in a way and color code it that makes it much easier to read. Um, I have another tutorial on correlation uh, matrices and coefficients. Um, in SPSS, PASW, as well as one on multiple regression that uses the same data set I'm going to use right now. It's called World 95, and it's a bunch of statistical data on a whole bunch of different countries, from Afghanistan down to 109 Zambia. Anyhow, I'm interested in infant mortality right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a whole bunch of other variables to try to predict levels of infant mortality. And here's how it works. You start by going to Analyze, to Correlate, to Bivariate, and I actually need to reset that. But here's the infinite mortality. Now, it really helps to take your most important variables, the ones outcomes you're interested in, and put them at the end first, because that puts them at the top and the left side of the correlation matrix, makes it much easier to deal with. And then I'm going to take just a whole bunch of other variables. I'm actually choosing more than I really mean to right now. Um, but just to show that I have to take a really big correlation matrix and make it look better. And I'm going to stick those in there too. And um, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to get my matrix. I'm going to show you there's, there's a little problem, something I need to deal with here. And that is, you have the variables listed down the side, the same variables listed across the top, and you have the symmetrical matrix. There's the ones down the middle because that's each variable with itself. And uh, you see like the 088 here is the same as the 088 here. The, the 0.936 here is the same as the 0.936 here. Anyhow, the problem is this. I don't have complete data on everything. Uh, if you have complete data, then you're, you're set. You're great to go. But I don't um, because I know, for instance, you see how it has 109 right there. But if I come over here, uh, for instance, to calories, I only have data on, from 75 countries on those things. And that's going to mess me up down to 74 there. In fact, uh, a good way to check for this is you want to see if you're going to have substantial variation in your sample size from one to another. A good way to do that is to go to what's called descriptive statistics. And I selected everything. Actually, I'll just do it over again. Select everything and put it in here and just hit OK. You're going to get a table that shows how much data you have for each of these particular variables. Now, it's mostly 109. There's a 75 right there. And I come down a little more, and two literacy ones have 85s. The problem is I have what's called a valid end list-wise. And what that means is that only 59 countries have data on all of these variables. And that's about half of the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to take out the offenders and look at uh, my list-wise from there. I'm going to do it like this. Come back down to uh, calories and come back down to here and here and remove those. Do it again. And now I have a, a list-wise of 102. So I have 102 countries now with complete data, which is much better than what I had before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a correlation matrix. Now you see I have one up here. It's kind of complicated. I'm going to do another one down below that's a little simplified. First off, I'm going to remove those two things here. I'm going to remove daily caloric intake, and I'm going to remove the two literacy variables. And then I'm going to do two simplifications. Number one, I'm going to go here to options, and I'm going to tell it to exclude cases list-wise. So what that means is I only want variables that have all of their data, uh, cases that only have all of the data. Then I'm also going to turn off this thing called flag significant correlations. Normally that's nice because it puts a little asterisk next to the statistically significant correlations, but I'm going to do something else to get that done. Anyhow, I hit OK. And here's my new matrix. It's a little smaller because it doesn't have the sample size within each cell because you know it's the same all the way through, so it just lists it once right here. Now, here's what I'm going to do to make this thing easier to deal with. I'm going to right-click on it and copy it. It'll take just a second. Then I'm going to Excel. i got a spreadsheet here, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start making a little list here in the first row, in the first column. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Then I'm going to come right here to the second one, and I'm going to paste in the matrix. And it's kind of a nightmare. It's stuff all over the place. I'm going to show you how to clean this up. First off, I take this one and this two, and I drag them down. 
And that's called propagating, and it makes a list. That's so I can get back the original order I was in. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to click once in here on any of these. You know, it doesn't matter which one. Click once in there, and then I'm going to sort the matrix. And now it puts the correlations all at the top, and it puts the significance levels right here. I don't need the significance levels because I have a different way that I'm going to deal with them. So I'm going to um, delete them by right-clicking delete. Oh, by the way, this one right here was the top. That just says correlations as the title. I don't need that. So I'm going to get rid of that. Delete. And now I'm going to put everything back into the order it was originally by clicking into this uh, numbering thing that I propagated. And that will put the uh, titles back up on top and this list wise thing back at the bottom. Now these all say Pearson correlations, so I don't need them. And I don't need this numbered list over here anymore because I'm in the order I'm going to stay in. Great. Now, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to double click right there on the divider, and that makes this get big enough to see all of these things. Then I'm also, I'm going to right click on the one up here and go to Format Cells to this one that says Alignment and Wrap Text. And you'll see how this goes from one line, and I hit OK, to be that I can read the whole thing. I'm also going to click on this little diamond to select the entire sheet. I'm going to center everything, which is nice. Then I'm going to click on A, and I'm going to uncenter the first one. Okay, so um, here are my correlations. So I'm left with just the correlations. Now, these have too many decimal places, so I highlight all of the correlations. Then I just come up to here, and I tell it I want two. And then I'm going to do conditional formatting here, but I need to know what are the statistically significant critical values for this. I have 103 people, 103 countries in the sample. Now here's how you know the cutoff. If you go to this web address, tinyurl.com slash core-prob.xls, you'll download an Excel spreadsheet I created just for this purpose. And it looks like this. And all you got to do is come to here and enter your sample size. In this case, 103. If it were 24, and then it would be something else. But I have 103, and this tells me what the statistically significant uh, cutoff values are. For the standard O5 level, it's 0.194. Now it could be positive or negative. Anything higher than positive 0.194 or lower than negative 0.194 is statistically significant. And so I'm going to take that one as my initial point. It's 194. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to highlight the correlation coefficients, all of them. Then I'm going to come up to Format, Conditional Formatting. Now, my apologies to Windows user. This is in a totally different place on the Windows versions of Excel, and I'm sorry for that. I know it's there, and I know how to do it. I just can't show it to you right now. Yeah, you know, I go, But you go to Conditional Formatting, and what I want is to get, so the cell values, those are the correlations here, are not between point, negative 0.194 and positive 0.194. So this is looking for things that are more extreme than those. Then I hit Format, and I go to this one, Patterns, and I pick a nice color to highlight the cells in. I'll use that one. I press OK. It comes back to here. I press OK again, and check it out. All of the significant correlations are now highlighted. This makes life much easier. Now, I'm going to show you something that makes life even easier than this. Now, sometimes you're not interested in every correlation with every other one. Sometimes you only want to look at some. I have one outcome variable here that I am particularly interested in. I don't care about what's correlated with everything else. I just want to look at infant mortality. Here's what I can do. I can take all of these other variables here, and I could have done this earlier, but I just saved it for now and here. And I just right-click, and I delete them. So check it out. Now I only have one column, and I don't need infant mortality right here also, so I can right-click on that, and I can delete that. If you have more than one outcome of interest, just make sure you select them all and put them at the top of the list, and they'll be here. Say you have like four or five of interest, and that's great. You can keep them all. Now I'm going to show you one more thing that you can do. Um, I'm actually, I like to put a little box around this, so I highlight those. I go to this thing. It says put a big thick box, isn't that nice? If I want to, I, I should put a little legend right here that says P less than 0.05.
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come up here. I'm going to highlight that in the same color. So this lets people know that the green means that the probability value is less than 0.5. Um, I can do additional ones. I can layer on darker colors for other more significant correlations. Um, whoops, went away from that. By going like this, if I do another, I need to see what the other values are. Like an 01 is 252. Um, if I come back here, I've got those highlighted. I can go back to format, conditional formatting. I can add a second rule. Cell value is not between negative 0.252 and positive 0.252. And I can click a format for that one, and I can make it a darker green if I want. 